Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Studio Jake podcast. This is the third episode. Be sure to like this video if you're watching or listening on Facebook or YouTube. Don't forget to share it out on these platforms. And also, if you're on YouTube, be sure to ring the little bell. That way, you'll get notification whenever I do upload a new podcast. YouTube is doing this weird thing where they're sort of curating your subscription feed, so you might not see everything in chronological order like you normally would. Also on Facebook, be sure to like my page and also click that you want notifications from there as well. That way you can get notifications whenever I go live there as well. So today I'm going to be talking about the Marvel Cinematic Universe TV series that are going to be uploaded directly to Disney+. Plus. I'm going to cover specifically uh, WandaVision, Loki, and the Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think all those series look interesting, and also the Super Bowl ad, which had clips from all three series. That's raising some eyebrows as well. So sit back, relax, and welcome to Studio Jake. Coming in hot, we're going to be talking about WandaVision. So for those of you unfamiliar, that is, if you've not been watching the MCU or any of the films, WandaVision is a spinoff concerning Wanda Maximoff and Scarlet Witch, played by one of my favorite actresses, Elizabeth Olsen, and Vision, who is an android created by Ultron in the film, the highly underrated film, by the way, Avengers Age of Ultron. He's played by Paul Bettany. So you find out in Avengers Infinity War, as the Avengers are in hiding, that Wanda and Vision have kind of created a relationship. Now, spoiler alert, Vision actually dies in Infinity War because you find out the crest on his forehead is actually an Infinity Stone. I believe... If, um, I believe it's the Mind Stone, which is why Loki was able to use it in the first Avengers to control people. Now... We've got an official synopsis, which is, according to Disney, while living their ideal suburban life, Wanda Maximoff and Vision begin to suspect things are not as they seem. So, basically, um, the series is created by Jack Schaefer, and it's he's doing a lot of the writing as well, and I guess it's going to be directed by Max Sheckman. Unfortunately, I don't know a whole lot of him, but it's also produced by Kevin Feige, so that's going to be interesting. Of course, Kevin Feige is the head honcho of Marvel Studios. Now, judging from the Super Bowl TV spot, it looks like Wanda and Vision are in this reality where they're living kind of like an 80s sitcom type lifestyle, but then they have these flashes where they realize that something is off. Now, Kevin Feige had previously stated in a couple of comments that angered some uh, Brie Larson fans that she is actually more powerful than Captain Marvel. I can actually see this if you're familiar with comic book lore, especially with um, Marvel Comics. Uh, just for a little bit of a backstory, Wanda... She's the daughter of Magneto, who, of course, is the X-Men villain who has done some crazy things. Basically, what happened was Wanda and her brother Pietro, who is Quicksilver, they appear in Avengers Age of Ultron. And that was kind of an iffy water territory, because at the time, before D Disney had acquisitioned Fox, Fox actually had the right to the X-Men. Now, since... Quicksilver and Wanda are the children of Magneto. They actually worked with his Brotherhood of Mutants. Um, depending on which version, there's the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, there's just the Brotherhood of Mutants, and then it, if you bleh, like the Ultimate Comics, there's the Brotherhood of Mutant Supremacy. So, they're children, they're his children, so there was some arguments back and forth about the rights to it, and they came to a compromise where Quicksilver could appear in Age of Ultron, but he would be killed off, and then the MCU would get Wanda, and then the X-Men film franchise would get Quicksilver. Of course, now that whole thing is mute, or, or mute now that Disney owns Fox. 
Um, in the comic book, Scarlet Witch, she is incredibly powerful. She has what's called hex powers. Um, some writers, every once in a while, try to, to tie her directly to the occult. Um, I know that this X-Men Evolution did this. They made it where she was trained to control her powers um, by a witch. And I believe the comic book also explored this a little bit. But however, it's not directly tied to that. She, she can connect to the magical energy that is on Earth-616, which is the official designation of Marvel's Earth. Um, similar to Captain... Uh, I'm sorry, not Captain. Similar to Doctor Strange. So, <clears throat> I am a little curious how that is going to uh, work in this TV series. They didn't really do that at all in the movies. They kind of just kept it where she had to do these general kind of energy telepathic powers. But one of the things she can do is she can actually hex reality. Um, in the House of M incident, she does this thing where she alters reality where Magneto wins, and he becomes the ruler of North America, I believe the United States, Canada, parts of Europe. And Wolverine figures out that something's wrong somehow. I can't remember exactly how, but Wolverine is immune to the effects. And so he gathers... Um, a bunch of the Avengers to reset time, and then later she actually hexes mutants, and she brings down the mutant population from pretty much, I believe, at the time of the comic books, it was around 30% of Earth's population, and she brings it down to measly 1%, but then, of course, that was undone in the Avengers versus X-Men storyline when the Phoenix came to Earth. So, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to go down in uh, in the show. I'm really curious what they're going to do. More than likely it's going to be Wanda creates this alternate reality and this could be a spoiler alert and then her and Vision um, figure out something's wrong. Like Wanda herself doesn't even know what's happening. I think that is what I'm gathering especially by the TV spot where you saw different images of of Wanda, and it, there was one where she was wearing her costume that was identical to her comic book one. So we'll have to wait and see. Originally, it wasn't supposed to come out until um, 2021, but according to Coming Soon and also Bounding into Comics, um, Bob Iger has actually moved the premiere up to December 2020. So seems like it has been wrapped pretty well. Um, there's all, uh, there's, it's also going to have a couple other stars. It's going to have Randall Park. Um, it's going to, you might remember him from the interview and Fresh Off the Boat. Catherine Hamm is also going to appear. She was in the drama series Crossing Jordan and has been in several other uh, TV show appearances throughout the years. She's a really funny actress. I'm excited to see her. She was in Parks and Rec as kind of a shady elections person. And then, of course, um, to Yona Paris, who was in Mad Men and also in the indie film Dear White People. Blah. Anyway, they are going to appear. The most interesting casting decision, though, is Kat Dennings is actually has been confirmed to be in it, and she was in Thor and Thor of the Dark World. So I wonder if she's going to uh, return as Darcy Lewis, which was the name of her character. She was um, Jane Foster, who was played by Natalie Portman. She uh, D um, Dennings played Darcy, who, who was that character's intern. So she didn't appear in Thor Ragnarok or any other subsequent Marvel films. So I'm curious if she's going to be a new character because originally Marvel Studios had a no recast rule, but they broke that rule for Luke Cage. So I wonder if um, they're going to break that rule again or if she's going to play Darcy again. We're going to have to wait and find out, but I am looking forward to WandaVision. Another moment that got people's attention during the MCU TV spot was Loki appears all dapper and in his MCU costume where he says, I'm going to burn this place to the ground. Now, of course, we've seen Loki all throughout 
the MCU. We saw him first in Thor. He also appeared in the first Avengers, where he was the main antagonist. We also saw him in Thor The Dark World, Thor Ragnarok, and of course Avengers Infinity War, where he was killed by Thanos. Sorry, spoiler alert. And of course Avengers Endgame, when the Avengers are collecting all of the different um, Infinity Stones, he there is a flashback to the first Avengers film where he gets a hold of the Tesseract and vanishes. So according to a few people, um, he's uh, actual to the uh, in actuality in the official premise it says after the events of Avengers in game, Loki uses the Tesseract to travel through time and alter human history. So I think they're going to do this where it's an alternate universe where Loki had escaped the events of Avengers Endgame and he's using that Tesseract to cause some trouble. The series will also star Sophie D. Martino, and, who is a British actress, and of course the, the always talented Owen Wilson has been cast in it. Um, he, of course, is in Bottle Rockets and a whole slew of wedding crashers. Uh, a whole slew of uh, comedies and shows. He, of course, voiced um, in Cars as Lightning McQueen, the main character, so he has a relationship with Disney there. But um, it's going to be released in early 2021, 20, and it's going to have six episodes. Now, apparently this is going to be a miniseries, but they want to leave it open for possible uh, seasons one and two on Disney+. Plus. It's going to be streaming there. Now, um, the series is created by Michael Waldron and directed by Kate Heron. I, again, I'm not familiar with Kate Heron's work, um, but Waldron will also serve as head writer of the show. Uh, it'll be produced by Kevin Feige as well. Now, this is the series I'm a little curious about because one of the things about Infinity War in Loki's death scene is that it was jarring. And they actually said, the Russo brothers who directed Infinity War and Endgame, they said they wanted to jar the viewer. They wanted to surprise you. They wanted to shock you. And it succeeded with that. And so I'm worried that this series is going to turn Loki into kind of a gimmick because he was one of the best villains of the MCU. It, it, that's just without question. He was just one of the best. And so I'm a little curious where this is going to go, because I don't want him to turn into a gimmick. I'm I'm not a huge uh, fan of that. Now, according to some sources, he's going to he's going to leave kind of the role of um, villain. He's going to just be like a trickster um, role. He's going to go back to being the god of mischief, basically, and. Now, um, there are, according to Bounding in the comics, there are reports that Loki had not started filming and even reports of casting still happening for the Disney Plus show. However, during the Super Bowl, we all got our very first tease of the upcoming Disney Plus series alongside WandaVision and the Falcon and, and the Winter Soldier. That's according to Bounding in the comics. So, there, um, they... A few people have said it looks like Loki is playing a um, character who's in prison, but I did, to me it looked similar to his classic costume. I guess that's just me. Maybe I didn't. I probably wasn't paying attention. I should probably go back and watch it one more time. Um, I guess it does kind of look like a prison uniform. It's gray, and it's got a um, this weird symbol that has a T and an infinity sign on it. So it's quite possible he's he's locked up in some prison, according to the official synopsis in Marvel Studios' Loki. The mercurial villain to Loki, Tom Hiddleston, resumes his role as the god of mischief in a new series that takes place after the events of Avengers Endgame. Kate Heron directs and Michael Waldron as head writer debuts on Disney Plus next year, 2021. So, I guess maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is a sort of a prison uniform looking thing. I, again, I'd I could, they could be wrong, but I could be wrong as well. You never know. But I am excited for the series. I do want to watch it. I just, again, I hope they don't turn Loki into to a gimmick that for us just to kind of laugh at. I hope that they maintain his character. I doubt we'll see Chris Hemsworth in this series. 
I have a feeling we're going to be uh, seeing some other uh, Marvel Comics characters, but we'll have to wait and find out. Last, but certainly not least, we have The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't know why they have to put so many thes in these titles. I don't know what Disney's obsession with the word the is, but it's incredibly annoying. Again, it's going to be streaming exclusively for Disney+. Plus. It is set to be a miniseries, so we don't know if it's going to have a second season, especially since it has such big names as Anthony Mackie, who's returning as the Falcon, and Sebastian Stan, who's returning as Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, respectively. So I don't really know what's happening. They're also going to incorporate some... Uh, they're also going to incorporate Sharon Carter, who was played by um, Emily Van Camp. She was in Captain America Winter Soldier and Captain America Civil War. She was also known as Agent 13. Apparently, she um, she's Peggy Carter's niece, and she's been on the run since the events of Civil War, um, similar to the other Avenger characters. So it's going to show what she has been up to um, during this time. Now, uh, um, Daniel... Brule, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, he's going to return as Baron Helmet Zemo. Now, again, spoiler alert, but at the end of Avengers Endgame, Sam Wilson, who is the Falcon, he is given the Captain America shield, and the series is supposed to um, explore what the consequences of that action according to the official premise after Stan Wilson was handed the mantle of Captain America at the end of Avengers Endgame, Wilson and Bucky Barnes find themselves teaming up in a worldwide adventure that puts their abilities to the test. Now, um, we're going to explore that side of it, and I'm curious how this is going to go in a post-Avengers Endgame um, universe. I really hope they don't delve into politics too much. I hope they, they keep it to... A, um, to a, just a good story. One of the reasons I'm concerned they're going uh, to bring in politics, um, and, and like I said, I don't mind if politics is kind of a subplot. We see this all the time in some of our favorite shows. One of my favorite shows is Blue Bloods. They interlace politics all the time, but they don't make it, they don't make politics the premise. They just make it a plot point. Sometimes I agree with it, sometimes I don't. My, um, my issue is when people make politics the premise. And that's what I'm worried about here. After all, it's 2020. It's actually, I think, in the MCU timeline, it's actually 2023. So I'm, I'm concerned that they're going to make it where they're going to try to force sort of these um, politically correct things into the storyline. One of my reasons for that is they're going to introduce... Uh, John Walker, who will be played by former hockey star and film star Wyatt Russell, who, yes, he's the son of Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. He's going to play John Walker. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with John Walker, he's also known as Super Patriot, uh, but also U.S. Agent. Um, basically, for a time, Captain America gave up being Captain America, and so the U.S. recruited John Walker as um, a replacement, and he became sort of this um, idealistic, militaristic version of Captain America. He became too much um, focused on action and violence, as opposed to Captain America, who was standing up for the Constitution and America's ideals. So... They end up having a showdown where, of course, Steve Rogers reclaims the mantle of Captain America and John Walker. Like I said, depending on the writer, he becomes U.S. agent or he becomes super patriot. But there's always a bitterness between him and Rogers. So with Rogers' retirement at the end of Avengers Endgame, he's passed the mantle on to Sam Wilson and the shield on to Sam Wilson, which I think is a good choice because for those of you unfamiliar um, Stan Lee, while he didn't create Captain America, he was um, a big-time writer for the Captain America mythos. Even before Captain America was with, was with Marvel, he was actually with a different comic book company that Marvel bought out and then reintroduced him in the pages of the Avengers. So Stan Lee and Gene Colon, uh, Colon they um, created Falcon to be 
one of Captain America's partners. They would work together in the Avengers. He, um, the Falcon would guest star in Captain America comic books. He was a main character in the Captain America comics for a while, uh, alongside Bucky Barnes. He was who, Bucky Barnes was created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, and went the Winter Soldier identity was created by Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting. Now, um, so whenever Marvel Comics announced that Steve Rogers had turned elderly again, basically what happened was a villain had drained the uh, the chemicals that created Captain America, the Super Soldier Serum, out of his body. So he aged, and he became um, sort of the director of the Avengers, similar to how S.H.I.E.L.D. has a director, and Falcon became the new Captain America. And I actually thought that was fine. To me, it's no different than if Dick Grayson had um, has become Batman on um, at more than one occasion, but he is the heir to the cowl, and similar to it, Falcon, I felt, was a worthy heir to the shield. They had given Winter Soldier a run as Captain America um, prior to the Fear Itself story arc. Great. It's Falcon's turn. My problem was they gave him really bad writers, and so he would always, in, where, where Iron Man and Captain America, and even um, the Black Widow, when they would lead the Avengers, it was always about, we have to do the right thing right now, um, whatever the circumstances. My problem with Falcon is, I remember reading um, an Avengers storyline where they're fighting Ultron. It's Ant-Man, Vision, and um, Sam Wilson as Captain America. And Ant-Man and Vision are arguing about what to do next. What can they do? And, um, and Sam Wilson forever just lets them argue. And then he does this bizarro speech about what humanity is and all this, and it was just a bunch of nonsense, just a lot of f philosophical meandering that ultimately meant nothing. And, and I think really that was uh, a disappointment to a lot of the fans, like me, who, like I said, we like Falcon, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't have minded him being Captain America, but he got really bad writers. So I hope in this miniseries, the Falcon and Winter Soldier, they give him more room to grow, they allow him to become Captain America in his own right, and they don't delve into politically correct politics and make that a premise of the show. Even I know it's going to have some... I mean, it's Disney. Disney has been putting um, politically correct messaging in their movies and television series you know, since the 90s, maybe even earlier, depending on who you ask. But... Hopefully, they'll avoid doing that. I don't know. Carrie Skoglin, she's a Canadian film director. You know, Canadian is probably one of the most politically correct nations in the world, but she could be really good. She's um, she's done a bunch of television directing, so I could see her doing a good job. I mean, hit hit shows like La Femme Nikita and a whole and a whole bunch of other ones some shows that aren't me but you know she's done the walking dead house of cards the punisher so she definitely knows the terrain at least a little bit as far as marvel comics so hopefully she'll be a good job we'll just have to wait and see i am excited for it i think it'll be good i hope my concerns are ill Founded. that's all the time we have for today be sure to like this video and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also ring that little bell so you get notifications. Also head over to Facebook. That's author Jacob Airy because I'm also posting these podcasts on my Facebook page as well. So be sure to like that Facebook page. Turn on the notifications there. Also head over to Twitter. You can follow me there at Real Jacob Airy. You can follow me on Instagram at Real Jacob Airy. Also my blog where I write even more about these things. There I do comic book reviews, I do movie reviews, I do anime reviews, I do TV show reviews, and I recommend books for you to read as well. So head over there, that's jacobairy.blog, J-A-C-O-B-A-I-R-E-Y dot B-L-O-G for all kinds of new content. Also, Valentine's Day is coming up. You don't know what to get your boo. Whether you're, it's your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever, this person is a bookworm, and you don't know what to get them. Don't worry, I have a solution. Get my novel, The Seven Royals, All Good Things. It has all of your favorite fairy tale characters. They're led by Prince Jasher, who is leading Rapunzel, Belle, Connor, James, Philip, 
Antalya on a quest to save their homeland from the evil mage Fabius Thorn and Emperor Midas, yes, the one who can turn people into gold by a touch. They have conquered their homeland and has, have enslaved the population, so the seven royals have to go and save their people before it's too late. Along the way, they encounter new enemies, allies, and surprises as they continue their journey. You can find it on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. You can get it on Rakuten through their Kobo e-reader downloads. You can find it on Apple Books. I mean, it's everywhere. Just search the title, The Seven Royals, All Good Things, or my name, Jacob Airy, to find you a copy. Get it for that loved one. Do not get the cold shoulder on Valentine's Day. That would be awful. That's all the time I have for today. I'll see you next time right here on Studio Jake.